Well, it's a little late this week, but hey, better late than never. The Raw Rumble and the Raw Review kind of pushed this back, but here it is. It's time for the weekly OTRS Central q and I'll be doing another one of them come Monday, so make sure you go ahead after watching this one, of course, you go to Twitter, at OTRS Central on Twitter, and you tweet your questions for the next Q&A. Thanks to those of you that tweeted your questions for this Q&A. Let's see how many of them I can get through in the next 14 and a half minutes or so. Uh... Let's see here. Clint Dempsey's number one fan. Thoughts on the potential Ambrose Jericho feud for the IC title towards WrestleMania? Number one, I didn't know that was a potential uh, IC title feud for WrestleMania. Number two, if it is, fuck that shit. I'll pass. I'll pass. I'm sure some people will be rubbing their dicks with eager anticipation. However, the simple fact of the matter is, I have no interest in seeing that whatsoever. Ever. That way. Uh, Dad Bod, Father Christmas himself, can arrive, talk some Nickelodeon-sounding crap, lose and leave. Nah, I'm good. The dynamics of it are stupid. Ambrose, frankly, at this point, deserves better. They could do something better with Jericho. Just dumb all the way around, in my opinion. I didn't even know that was a possible uh, feud for Mania. I hope it's not. Uh, Cena eats dick. I'm sure he does. Can you give a scenario in which John Cena could turn heel and the fans get the most enraged about it? Yeah. It's what his character's been for the past decade. He already is a heel. Again, I will emphasize the whole concept of trying to sit there and talk about a heel turn. The dude is already the top villain of WWE. He is the barrier. He is the obstacle. Just because kids like him, that doesn't mean shit. Just because some women like them, that doesn't mean shit. Just because fat boys who can't get laid and live in basements and crap like that like them, that don't mean shit. John Cena's the top heel in that company and has been for several years now. All right, let's see here. El Grady Jr., whatever happened to the other guys you used to make the videos with? They're all back in Iowa. I'm out here in Virginia now. That's basically the, the sum of the parts as to what happened. Um... Then he also asked, what's your views on Kurt Angle possibly fighting Kimbo Slice on Bellator? It's just dumb. Anybody that buys that crap, I hope they get the terrible fight that it should be. Um, Mark Main, would what happens if they would actually build Triple H to WrestleMania 32 as God? Well, he is God. They've built him as God for 15 years now. I'm glad you arrived at the conclusion that all of us did. Me, as your mere prophet of the WWE Universe, I can assure you, Triple H has always been God. This is not something they're just building to. Chairman O, what do you think of Sanders wanting to raise the wage limit or the minimum wage to $15 an hour? Um, it sounds great in theory. It sounds great in practice. I, I'm, I'm for raising the minimum wage. I think this whole concept of uh, if you eliminate the minimum wage, it would be good. No, it would be a disaster because all of a sudden now companies are going to start paying their employees more. No, without that baseline, bottom line benchmark, they'd pay them as little as it fucking possibly could. It would be a disaster. People like Donald Trump saying that we pay too much in wages are fucking stupid, although that doesn't tell the full story. It's not just about wages. It's about price. It's about many other economic factors. Wage is one part of that because people have to make money. The ridiculous levels to which we're taxed at the federal, state, and local level are also ridiculous. You think about our actual true effective tax rate. I mean, it's an astronomical amount. Um, I'd be in favor of maybe a raise to 10 or $11 an hour. I think that's a much more feasible and reasonable one. And frankly, those bigger companies in particular that sit there and say they couldn't afford it are full of shit. And frankly, I think some of the smaller companies, too, in the grand scheme of things, talking about paying somebody $3 more an hour. I mean, at the end of the day, even for small businesses, let's be really realistic. Let's say you've got five employees. Let's just say a really small business. You've got five employees, and two of them you're paying minimum wage anyways. But a couple of them maybe you're paying 9 bucks an hour. So you have to bump everybody up to 10 bucks an hour instead of what is it now, seven twenty-five. So let's say an extra 3 bucks an hour just for the fuck all of it. So over the course of 40 hours, you're paying somebody an extra $120 a week. Is that really that big of a deal? Is that really that bad? Wouldn't people making more money perhaps make them happier with their job and therefore make them more productive, more efficient, more effective, therefore giving you a greater chance to 
increase your overall bottom line. I mean, I think fifteen hours, fifteen dollars an hour is a bit ambitious. I think fifteen dollars an hour doesn't deal with some of the greater intricacies and difficulties of what happens to somebody that's maybe making thirteen or fourteen an hour. Are you going to give them a proportional raise, or are you just going to sit there and stick them at fifteen an hour? That would seem inherently unfair. So people at this end of the spectrum making, let's say, eight bucks an hour right now, working at fucking Walmart or McDonald's, are going to go all the way up to fifteen. But this guy working in a call center making maybe twelve, thirteen, fourteen is only going to go up to fifteen. I mean, it's a great rallying point. It gets to the whole income inequality thing, and that is a legitimate, serious issue. You know, it gets to the whole debate of capitalism versus socialism, which, frankly, is kind of a stupid talking point in this country anyways, because we're not a purely capitalistic system, nor are we a purely socialist system. We are a hybrid system. We are. We're not an entire free market system, nor have we ever been. You know, if we were truly free market, then i say, okay, let's go free market. Let's go all the fucking way. No more tax breaks for any fucking buddy. No subsidizing people having three, four fucking kids. No more subsidizing corporations sitting there and sending jobs overseas. All that shit fucking cuts out, among other things. So $10, maybe $11 an hour. I don't think the financial ramifications are that big. I mean, sure, you'll have idiotic Republicans and uh, Chamber of Commerce people that will sit there and say it would be disastrous. It's fucking not. It would probably actually be a good thing. $15 an hour could create some problems, not just from an economic standpoint, but other associated things as well. Brian Walmer, do you think Reigns versus Triple H at WrestleMania will also mark the end of the authority as well as be for the title? Could. But then where do you go from there? You know, it could. But I, I don't really know. Dylan Schwartz, are you going to end up doing the Wrestling Company Fantasy Draft? No. I gave up on that shit. I don't want to fucking do that. I'm moving forward, not backward. That was something that I thought I was going to do and I wanted to do, and then I decided I didn't want to do it, so I fucking didn't do it, and I'll just leave it like that. This really isn't a question, I don't think. Bo Rida, Ziggler isn't a fan of Space Jam figures. This isn't a question, but this still needs to be addressed anyways. Can I get a three claps and a fucked off Ziggler? <laughs> fucked off Ziggler! Mid-card piece of shit. Of course his dumbass wouldn't like the greatest movie ever made because it was a true fucking story. Asshat. Preston Emmons. Have you ever watched the Heroes of Wrestling pay-per-view? I heard it was really bad, even with the WWE legends on the card. It was really, really bad in part because those WWE legends were on the card. <laughs> Jake is sick. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Rain Foster Podcast. What would have happened if Fusiant and Bischoff had bought WCW back in 2001? And do you think the Big Bang pay-per-view would have worked? I don't know about the Big Bang pay-per-view. What would have happened with them in 2001? I don't know because the first problem is where would they would have gone? Where would they have gone from a network standpoint? Because without the television deal, the WCW brand didn't have a whole lot of dollar value associated with it. So that would have been a serious concern for them. They had to get a new TV deal. I think based off of the rating that they were that they had at the time, somebody might have bought into it. But I'm not sure how it would win. Then he also asked, is it safe to say next Sunday will be Peyton's last game? And who do you think will win Super Bowl 50? I'm sorry. I don't think it will play out quite like Super Bowl 48 did between the Seahawks and the Broncos. But damn it all, how could you look at the Panthers and Broncos and think the Broncos are realistically going to win? The Panthers are a much more balanced, much more complete team. They have the much better quarterback right now. Yes, the Broncos' defense is really good, but Peyton Manning is really bad. I mean, because if we're being perfectly honest, either one or two things should have happened in the AFC Championship game. If Bill Belichick didn't make so many ridiculously dumb decisions in terms of game and clock and situation management, the Patriots would have won and went to Super Bowl 50. Or, on the flip side, if Peyton Manning didn't have such a noodle arm that would make even Chad Pennington feel ashamed of him, you know, he would have hit some of those throws because, I mean, he missed several guys wide open in the end zone. The Broncos, in all theory, if Peyton Manning was anything at all, should have beat that overrated Patriots team by three or four touchdowns. I mean, there are several throws in, to guys in the end zone where you could tell Peyton Manning is lacking arm strength now because those throws that required touch, he overthrew them. And it wasn't by much. And, you know, of course, the media is going to spin their shit. Phil Sims can't stop but having a hard on for this fucking dude. But I would expect the Panthers to beat the Broncos by at least two touchdowns. I don't think it's going to be some 43-8 to eight shit, but it's got to be at least two touchdowns. It's got to be. You know, the Panthers can be a little susceptible on the ground. Maybe the Broncos can exploit that. But I think Ron Rivera will be smarter than Bill Belichick, frankly. I know that sounds funny to say, 
but he's going to sit there and remember his own experience back in 2006 in the Super Bowl when Peyton Manning kind of picked him apart on the five to eight yard underneath throws to guys like Dominic Rhodes and Joseph Adai out of the backfield, and he's not going to let that happen. He's going to say, if you're going to beat us, Peyton, you're going to beat us deep, and that's where the trouble's going to come in. And the Broncos are going to have trouble sustaining drives. Peyton Manning's going to freeze in another clutch situation. I mean, if anything other than that happens, then either the NFL is incredibly rigged or it's an incredibly fucked up performance by the Carolina Panthers. They should beat them by at least two touchdowns. They should. They really, really should. I don't see how anybody could argue any differently, really. The whole thing of defense beats offense in the big games, well, yeah, but Carolina's defense can still be pretty good. And furthermore, they just dominated a much better and more explosive Arizona Cardinals offense. I mean, I'm just saying... Panthers are 15 1. You talk shit about their strength of schedule all you want, but 15 1 and 15 1. And they kind of dominated the first half of the game against the Seahawks in the divisional round. They dominated and kicked the Cardinals' asses. I don't see how this is anything other than the team of destiny at this point. Uh, Zanzibar Aqu Aquatic Hand. Okay, there we go. Um, who do you want to see The Undertaker face at WrestleMania 32? I ask because. I'll ask because rumors float of Undertaker versus Braun. Oh, God. I don't know who the fuck you have Taker face. But Braun Strowman? Seriously? Oh, my God. Taker, just take WrestleMania off, dog. You don't want none of that. Let's see here. Jacob Castle. With the last four of the five... Rumble winners being from the Breakfast Club is an Orton win, a certainty for next year. Wouldn't hurt. Everett Harding, what was your reaction to the McMahons versus Shawn Michaels and God storyline in 2006? It didn't directly involve Triple H at that moment. You know, how, how are you going to go against God? You don't actually physically have Triple H there. I'm just saying. Uh, let's see here. David Robinson, what's your predicted WrestleMania card? That'll come up here soon. I don't remember you put that out yet. Uh, L-I-T-D-J, boy, favorite pay-per-view of all time. Uh, WrestleMania 3, SummerSlam 92, SummerSlam 2002. Those would be a couple that stand out to me. Evan Voorhees, do you see AJ Styles truly being a major player in WWE? Mm. Depends on how you define major. They're not putting the world title on him. At some point in time, they'll lose interest in him. That's my belief. Or what happens is, is they'll only feature him in a certain way, and they'll emphasize too much on the in-ring shit and not talk about other things. Uh, that's the way it could be. Luke Wynn Staley, what's your opinion on Matt Hardy's Twitter madness as of late? Wish, frankly, he would spend a little less time on Twitter and a little more time on the sit-ups and the ab work and the ab fucking machine and maybe hit the gym every once in a while, you fat piece of crap. Now, you're supposed to be the fucking world champion for a company, and he looks like shit. Period. Hit the goddamn gym. Do some goddamn sit-ups. A little less time on the social media. And, of course, just like everybody involved with professional wrestling, fucking idiots using social media in a way that is not designed to draw any money whatso fucking ever whatso fucking ever and gets no new attention, no new eyeballs on the wrestling business at all. And so that way, his dumb ass can sit there when he's not getting his ass beat by Rebby Sky and he can get fat. Hit the fucking gym, you fat piece of shit. How embarrassing it is for the fucking wrestling business that that fat tub of lard is a fucking world champion. And how dare he reference Triple H's politics. At least with Triple H's politicking, he's still hitting the gym and the growth hormone and the marijuana. Well, we know Matt Hardy knows how to hit the marijuana. Probably hits the growth hormone, but even he probably fucks that up too, fat ass. Hit the gym, you piece of shit. It's embarrassing. Feel bad for TNA fans to have to watch and see an Ethan Carter III that actually looks like he works out a few times a week to Matt Hardy. The only thing he's working out is the donut curl machine. Let's see here. Matt Meffey, instead of Triple H Reigns, could an Ambrose Triple H match work for Mania? I really don't think so. That's not in the cards for God. Matt Meffey also wants to know is Brock versus Bray a lose lose situation? Also, could Owens versus Styles work for Mania? I think Owens versus Styles has a better chance of working at Mania than, frankly, a Brock versus Bray. I think it's a lose lose situation, yeah. 
because otherwise it'll be the third straight year Bray Wyatt loses at WrestleMania. How are you ever going to make a guy a star if he loses all of, his, all of his big signature matches? If you have Brock lose, then you're sitting there and telling me that he can beat The Undertaker. He's the only guy that beat The Undertaker. But the guy in Bray who couldn't beat The Undertaker multiple times going for it, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, he could beat fucking the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar. And then if you get a bunch of help, it's just a bunch of shit. I really do think you're right. I think it is a lose-lose situation. I really do. Uh, Muddle up 60. Who would you book to be Taker's opponent at 32? Ah, I really, frankly, don't know if there's a great option. Some might throw out their Kevin Owens, and that might be an, a mediocre fallback at best. Probably no Sting, so it's not going to be Sting. John Cena's out, so that would have been the most logical choice at this moment. I don't really know that there is one. You gotta find something. Owens at this point would make the most sense. Even then, it's not great. Um, let's see here. JJ the Great 15. With Brock's burial, the Wyatt family imminent. Wouldn't the Heaven's Gate storyline be a great. <laughs> he put in a hashtag Wyatt's and Nikes. Yeah, they're all they're all rocking their fucking Cortezes underneath sheets. Oh, that'd be fucking incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tuxedo, who's more butthurt right now? People upset about Triple H winning the Rumble or Kanye West? Oh, Kanye. What a dipshit. I'm sorry. I was sitting there watching Rocky IV last night, and I was looking, and I'm like, God damn it. You know, I'm looking, and there's James Brown. I'm like, we used to get entertainers like that. And now I look... And some of the biggest names are dipshits like Kanye West. Talking shit about this, talking shit about that. Just shut the fuck up and go away. I swear to God, ever since his mom... He was always a jackass and an idiot, but ever since his mom died, he just went all fucking south. He almost went northwest. <laughs> was he just mad about the fact that... Amber Rose isn't playing with his asshole anymore. I don't know what the type of gay shit he's on. Furthermore, is he just mad about the fact that the the Kardashian curse is alive and well? Furthermore, is he mad about the fact that still all these years later, nobody can point to one actual talent that Kim Kardashian has, and the fact that the only reason that anybody knows the fuck about her is because of what she did with Ray J, and she couldn't even fake an orgasm well. I mean, she couldn't even act well in a sex tape. I mean, that's how dumb and bad she fucking is and how dumb and bad that fucking family is. Uh, all right, that's it for me. Um, so in the meantime, thanks for you guys again that asked your question. Sorry I didn't get to all of them, but I'm not going to spend all day doing this. Uh, I'll be back again with another QA video on Monday. Uh, tune in tomorrow for the OTR Central Triple Threat video. Didn't have it last week because of the Rumble, but I'm going to have it tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Check out this past Royal Rumble review and this last week's Raw review. Yeah! If you haven't, hop on the good foot, do the bad thing, and go watch it, watch it now!